Wolves not only directly impact elk populations like in Yellowstone Park, but wolves also play a vital role in many interrelationships within an ecosystem. But there are other factors in nature that can impact an ecosystem. This place looks dead, barren, like nothing could live here again. But an exciting process is underway, ecological succession. All of this vegetation in this forest is going to regrow in a predictable way over time. All of this burnt ash underneath here is a viable seed bank. That means these seeds are alive and are going to grow back in a great way. Fire as a secondary succession. So in the same way that a keystone species or a top predator can change an entire ecosystem, this fire is necessary for creating more diversity. All succession doesn't work this way though. Sometimes it has even more violent beginnings than this. Look, succession comes in many forms, but we can separate it into two types, primary and secondary. Secondary succession results from a disturbance that is either natural, like a forest fire, a landslide, or a tornado, or one that is a result of human activities, like farming or logging. In these cases, vegetation existed before the disturbance. In contrast, primary succession occurs when no previous vegetation was present. Essentially, it's starting from a clean slate. A few good examples are glaciers as they retreat, strip mines, and as new lava spews from the earth. So to look at succession, we're sending Suze over to the big island of Hawaii, to the active volcano of Kilauea. Right now, we're in one of the few places on Earth where you can consistently see new lava flowing from the ground. In fact, we're on top of the hot spot that created the entire Hawaiian archipelago. Magma pushes up from Earth's mantle through the crust. Since the crust is moving, new vents form and new islands are created. So currently Kilauea is right on top of the hot spot and it's really active. This is where primary succession begins with the creation of new barren land. Right now, I'm standing on a younger flow, and this is our first chance to start documenting life. But let's take a step back and think about what's changed from our starting point of liquid rock to the point where life can be supported. So ecosystems are shaped by biotic and abiotic factors. But before biotic factors like plants, animals, and fungi can become established, we need abiotic factors like sunlight, rainfall, and nutrients. And today, I'm here with ecologist Joe Mascaro, and he studies how ecosystems change over time. And Joe's going to help us understand how we can start with solid rock, and through biotic and abiotic factors, they can change this rock to support life. So let's track the stages of primary succession by visiting lava flows of different ages. 
So, Suze, this is the earliest stage of succession, where the rock's been colonized by lichen and some small sword ferns. These guys will colonize lava right away, almost the day after it cools. And once they do, they'll begin the soil formation process. So they'll grow and they'll start to break apart the edges of these rocks, which are really friable and easy to break. And then the lichen will fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and that will begin to build up soil on the surface of the rock. Now let's move to the next stage of succession, one that's a bit older. Well, Suze, this flow looks like the ecosystem has developed a bit more than the last flow. So you can see how there's so much more lichen than there was on the previous flow. It's almost like a carpet. And as the lichen grows, it's basically breaking up the surface of the rock and starting the soil formation process, which is really happening in earnest now compared to the previous flow. The first plants that become established are early colonizers. Early colonizers have other characteristics. They're fast growing, they need lots of light, and they're usually wind dispersed. That's right. And there's basically two types of early colonizers we might see on a flow like this. There's some that have a symbiotic relationship with fungi, and so they're able to fix atmospheric nitrogen directly and use it immediately. And then there are plants that are just able to tolerate really low levels of nitrogen, like ohia. Okay, off to the next stage. So here we have an even older flow. So we're actually going to see quite a bit more soil here than we saw in earlier flows. And we've really got a lot of moss. So we're really starting to see the ohias come together and we're getting much closer to a closed forest. We're not quite there yet, but you can see how much taller they are and thicker. Off to the next flow. So this is what scientists would call mature forest. It's over 300 years old. It might be hard to imagine, but this whole area was once barren lava rock. Let's go check it out. So, we're definitely in a later successional forest now, which means we're dealing mostly with tree species that are not wind dispersed. They typically have big fruits, maybe dispersed by animals. They're much slower growing. And of course, they tolerate shade. And as a result of all those features, they tend to need a lot more nutrients over time to grow. So let's do a quick review of what we've learned about succession. So there are two types of succession. Primary, where no vegetation was present, and secondary, where the vegetation was present. The vegetation changes that occur during succession are a result of abiotic and biotic factors, which in turn affect the nutrients that are available to plants. During primary succession in our lava field, the lichens become established first, creating soil. Then, fast-growing, light-demanding colonizers transform the nutrient composition of the soil. Later on, you have a mature forest with slower-growing, shade-tolerant plants. But look, succession doesn't just happen in remote places like Hawaii. It's around us every day, and you can study it. That's right. All you need is a notebook and a disturbed piece of ground, like a burnt field, or this ground right here. Then, plot out your area and then make weekly observations to see how many plants begin to grow in that little plot. As well, don't forget to count how many different kinds of plants will grow in that plot. It's a really simple experiment and you'll never be able to predict what's going to happen! But remember, never stop considering how your world is changing, never stop exploring your world. Uh, we got Jonas in the background. Jonas, give a little hit that you're back there. That's Jonas there. And if you're back behind there, then I can... <laughs> so, successions can have even more violent beginnings than forest fires. Who knew?